Every year, the number of students applying and heading to college around the world grows, and along with this, so does the cost of college tuition and fees. In the past three decades, college enrollment for 18 to 24 year olds has risen from 26% to 41%, and college tuition and fees have increased by 1,120%, raising 2.5 times faster than inflation. MESA programs across the country are working to support socially and economically disadvantaged students and help them continue their education after high school. Every year, the Ukiah High MESA classes raise money in order to financially support the seniors in the MESA program who are enrolled in college or four-year universities. In presenting these hard-working MESA students and their lives, we hope to raise a significant amount of money for the MESA Scholarship Fund at UHS which is currently too small compared to the number of qualified students in need. Well, MESA helps students go to college. Students whose parents have never been to college, who do not know the way to college, who these students are the first in their family to go to college and um, really make a difference in their lives and the rest of their family's lives. Um, since they are the first in their family to go to college, they work incredibly hard and they go down this path that no one has gone down before and um, we help them do that. It's really rewarding. I'm a MESA advisor, but you know, I was a MESA student when I was in high school. I was in the same position. No one in my family had ever gone to college. My parents got maybe a third grade education and um, I was in the MESA program. And in MESA class, I was um, in with students who were just like me, who were the first in their family to go, and together we worked hard to get there, along with the teachers, the you know the advisors, the director. And now I get to do the same for them. It's the best thing in the world. Why I joined MESA? I've been hearing for a while like it's that MESA helps out a lot. You have time to just finish all your, your homework and get help and advice on where to go and what to do with just any talk, anything you have trouble with. Um, honestly, I didn't choose to join MESA. When, no, no, hold on. I'm gonna explain why. Because when I was a freshman, I I was just put into six different classes that I didn't. I didn't choose my class, I was just put into these classes and uh, one of them was MESA so eventually I I liked it so I kept um, choosing it as my elective. Um, well MESA has been almost like a, not family tradition but a, a something that's helped my family. Two of my siblings were in MESA and the program really helped them uh, go to college and achieve their dreams so I thought uh, I could use the help. MESA has helped me by knowing what to do, like when to apply for colleges, when were the deadlines for like UCs or CSUs, also getting advice on like what, what would be a good place to go, why and why not, and also like to be like just thinking ahead of, of what you need to do. Uh, MESA has helped me um, definitely gain more um, confidence in my potential to go to college, especially people that uh, people that are represent representatives of, me of MESA that are adults um, no sometimes come and talk to us and um, listening to these people and their stories are very motiv like they motivate you and so ach achieving your dreams and whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, well all of the mentors there have taught me a lot about college and school um, they've we've gone on college tours and 
a lot of them I can consider friends and talk to them about anything. I think mainly just finding out what I need to do, like education-wise, because my family wasn't really, I mean, they only graduated high school and couldn't do much more, so trying to figure out what to do to go to a four-year. Um, I think some of my biggest struggles are all kind of correlated, like through my childhood and through high school. It's mostly, um, you know, being a minority student, wanting to pursue a higher education and having racial stereotypes that don't prevent you from meeting those goals, but that make it harder for you. So I think that's definitely something that has impacted me and that has motivated me to go beyond that. Throughout my childhood, probably the fact that my parents were immigrants since they didn't know any English or there was always a lack of money so that we couldn't always have what we needed at times just regular being clothes or food. I think it'd be learning English um, when I got to Ukiah um, when I was 12, um, right like a week before se seventh grade year in Palmolita I had to, oh, well I didn't know English before then um, and it was hard starting from scratch and communicating and be going to six classes every day and learning new subjects and trying to excel in school with that language barrier. Hello, I'm a weird kid. Some of my biggest struggles have been keeping up with um, schooling and my health issues, losing cancer and just keeping up with all of it. <laughs> I didn't even know where I was for maybe three months. I didn't know the name of the streets or anything. Um, just getting used to this new world because it's so different from where I used to come from. Uh, oh, I come from Mexico. Yeah, you can see cows in the street and stuff like that. Chickens and all that. No, seriously, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> The most salient memories of my childhood are moving from house to house. As a child, I thought my mother could not decide where to live because my family was such a close-knit union. So we jumped from one relative's house to another. Grandparents, step-grandmothers, aunts and uncles. My five-year-old self thought it was fantastic to be staying with different people, traveling between states. It was exciting to tell people that I lived everywhere and nowhere at once. It was not until years later that I realized why my family lived like that, why we could never manage to stay in one house, and why all of our possessions were battered and worn hand-me-downs. My family was poor. Learning this, I felt neither shame nor resentment, but instead a strange sense of pride. Staying with buried family members allowed me to immerse myself in diverse cultures. I grew to welcome many more ideas and beliefs than I would have if my family were financially prosperous and lived in an insular unit. Living with my maternal grandfather, I was introduced to the lifestyle of cowboys and ranchers. I gained a strong work ethic as I was given chores which needed to be completed on time and with quality over speed. Moving to my maternal grandmother's house introduced me to the Hindu religion. We attended the Ratha Yatra parades in San Francisco frequently, giving me the opportunity to dress, eat, and experience a new and exotic way of living. Staying with my biological father's parents presented the opportunity to absorb the Mexican culture. I learned to speak Spanish and to understand that family and working to support one another was the number one priority in a Mexican household. As a child, growing up with these distinct cultural influences has provided me with an open mind to all the choices that the world can offer. I have learned to respect myself and others and that with diligence and tenacity, achievement can be realized. Living in poverty, I have learned to accept what is given to me and utilize it to its fullest potential. 
Never asking for too much, only for what is realistic and beneficial to me or others. The best thing that could have happened to me was being a child in a financially poor but richly diverse family. I felt trouble when my mom woke me up one Saturday morning because my dad had already left for work. Quickly I put on my clothes and shoes. My mom handed me my dad's long sleeve shirt, which I didn't like because it was too big. I ran to the kitchen, grabbed a piece of bread and filled up a cup with hot milk. I left home with my breakfast in one hand, riding my bike towards the field hoping to be there on time. I rode three miles on a dusty road that connected the potluck with my town. When I arrived at the cornfield, no one was there, and the harvesters were already deep into the maize field. I quickly put on my wangoche, which is a sackcloth. Sackcloth used to collect the corn cobs and grabbed a, a piscador, which is a rudimentary tool to harvest corn cobs by hand, from my dad's uh, tool bag. I started to harvest, but I was so slow, it was impossible to catch up. My competition was grown men, and I was still in elementary school. It was lonely and quiet and I could um, hear the, their laughter in the distance. Someone came from behind me whistling a familiar song and it was my dad. He kept whistling as he, as he approached and without saying anything to me he took over my cornrow and told me to go down with the rest of the workers. Uh, with a smile he challenged me to keep up with them as I carried the heavy bongoche. I could barely walk while, while wearing it. My hometown in Mexico was picturesquely rural. No stop signs, no big trucks, or no recycling bins. I was fortunate to have a clean change of clothes every day, unlike my older brothers. They had to move to the United States so that my mom and dad did not have to struggle so much to provide the rest of us with a piece of bread at night. My parents never attended college or even secondary school. My dad worked for my grandfather his whole life, from before sunrise to after sunset. His poverty never ended due to the low price of corn. He didn't finish his elementary studies until he was married, because my grandfather always took him out of school to work. It was the same story with my mom. She told me that she could never pay attention to the teacher because she was so hungry that the board seemed impossible to read. She never passed third grade. When I visited my friends, it was irritating to hear their moms insisting they do their homework immediately after school. I generated my own habit of doing my, own, my homework at night. My mom never had to tell me to do it. It was not that she didn't care. I did it because it was a joy compared to hauling five gallon buckets topped with corn kernels to the mill for the pigs. When I listen to my brothers talking about their childhood, it bothers me that mine was more joyful. Sometimes I would spend the afternoon with my dad, smearing my nation with mud, cutting off off of the cow. I only had to cut off alfalfa for one cow, and my brothers used to walk miles to feed an entire herd. I wish my childhood had been more demanding so that I can now feel deserving of any comment of admiration about my life. Now when I have conversations with my older brothers, I realize how fortunate I am. I didn't have to risk my life in order to come to the United States. I used to feel inferior because I had it easy. I didn't have to sleep under a tree when I first came to this country. There are people who admire me because of my achievements and my future goals. Their compliments ring hollow according to my criteria. I do not feel worthy of this praise because of all the support I have had. I am glad to have experienced the taste of a cold morning surrounded by corn plants and a good bowl of chicken soup at the end of the day. It makes me realize how I do things all the time in order to feel that I am alive. I learned another language to show appreciation to my mom for not telling me to do my homework and to my dad for taking me to work as a child.